Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number nine at Woodbine on Woodbine Mile Saturday is the grade two Canadian stakes. $250,000 is the purse. It's a great race to bet with a DRF Bets account because you get a 300% deposit match when you sign up at bets.drf.com. Deposit 50, bet with 200. Here's the field for the grade two Canadian. One turn, about one mile and an eighth on the E.P. Taylor turf course. $250,000 is the purse. Inflexibility at two to one. New Money Honey at five to two. They're your two morning line favorites. They're both trained by, guess who? Chad Brown. In Flexibility's last two buyer speed figures of 99 are faster mm. than anything this field has ever run, so she certainly has a buyer speed figure edge. Yeah. I liked her performance in the dance smartly, a race in which she worked hard, I think, yeah. before being overrun by a Chad Brown runner, Santa Monica in the lane. I expected big things in the Beverly D, Mike. I really thought Inflexibility would win mm -hmm. great. I was real disappointed, even though she ran fast. Yeah, I, she got it. She, Paired up her figure in that race. I don't think she ran nearly as well. We'll see what happens. That was obviously, to me anyway, was a way tougher field than this one. Um, you know, her dance smartly, I think, you know, she ran well in there. I think it was maybe even a little bit of an underrated performance just because that pace was so fast in the middle stages and it really set things up for the horse who eventually came along and closed it down. I thought she ran well that day. She obviously likes Woodbine. She's run really well up here every time they've tried her. All those things you like about her. She'll get a good trip in this race. I thought maybe she would be the favorite in this race. We'll see how that all plays out. Um, and I'm just not a huge fan of hers. That's why I went against her. I do think she's the horse. Well, you made though. a very good argument while I was waxing poetic mm. about her chances in the Beverly D saying, yes, I liked her dance smartly. Dan, here's the problem. I really don't like any of her other races that yeah. much. Yeah, that, that's my problem with her. I mean, I think she's a fine horse. Obviously, when you start picking her apart, her PPs, they've run her in some good spots. She's held her own. I just don't think she's that good, and she's not the kind of horse I'm looking to take a super short price on. New Money Honey, the second choice on the morning line, trained by Chad Brown, won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf in 2016, won the Belmont Oaks in 2017, and then Chad and the Connections took a shot. Yeah. They ran her in the grade one Alabama on the dirt, and against that field, she was far from embarrassed. Yeah, I agree. The problem is, since that race, she just seems to lack the same fire that she showed before she tried the dirt. I agree with all that stuff. Um, so we'll, obviously she has a big question to answer, I think, in this race, because I think you're right about all of it. Um, you know, the last two races at the end of last year, I was disappointed in them. I tend to give her the the Keeneland, the, the Keeneland excuse for the, for the QE2. She was not good in that race, but I don't like either of her races at Keeneland, and I just wonder if she's one of those horses who doesn't run well there. I don't know what to say about her American Oaks. I, I didn't think she had any real excuse that day. Um, so she's come back this year. It's only two starts as a four-year-old. Um, the first one was not an impressive win for a horse who was a shorter price as she was, but they made a conscious decision to rate her in that race. I think she could have won that race easily, uh, a lot more easier if they just put her on the front in that field and they didn't do that. She got it done, her Diana. I don't know, she ran okay in that race. She didn't run terrible, uh, I'll put it that way. Now she ships up here into a race where I don't know, Dan, this looks like a much easier spot to me. I think in a lot of ways, if she can still run, if she still has her best race in her, I don't know if she does, but if she does, I think she's a better horse than Inflexibility. I'd just rather have her. That's a very fair point. Just off the PPs, you could argue she's the class of this yeah. field, and if she runs her race, she's probably going to win, and she probably trips out close to the yeah, pace. In her. If you too. get her at the second choice, you could argue that's value. Negon's Eclipse is probably going to set the pace. Time Form US is going to agree with that assessment. They've got the 4.63. They also have a red bar indicating a fast pace. This horse was on the lead as the chalk last time out in the Victoriana. It was run down at a shorter distance, although the horse that beat her is pretty underrated. She's won yeah. three out of her last four, and she came back to win again an optional claimer. Yeah, that horse is, is pretty sharp right now, so it's not a terrible loss for her, but it's not a fast race either. Um, so she's obviously going to have to do a lot better than that. She is a, a group two winner, three starts back going a flat mile when she got loose. Um, I don't think she can get loose in this race, and I would be very concerned about her getting the mile on eight in this Starship race. Starship Jubilee, I think, is going to push her at least somewhat yeah. in the early portion of this race. Boy, she got good for Kevin she Attard did. last year, reeling off wins in the Nassau and the Dance Smartly, then third in this race to Kadura last year. She's rock solid, and she beat the boys last time out, but she really got a nice setup to do it, sitting off a nice, easy pace against inferior competition. Yeah, I mean, it took a class drop. It was against Coles, but it was a big class drop for her, and she got it done with a nice trip in that race. Her first couple of starts uh, prior to that off a little bit of a layoff, boy, they were pretty disappointed. I wonder if she still has that form that she uh, had last year in her. I don't know if she does, but 
there are back races to get to you that would make her really tough in this race. On the far outside is Hallie Bell, who scratched out of a yeah. race at Kentucky Downs this week. She's going to be making her third start of the form cycle after pairing up by her tops. Perhaps that's a, a sign that she's going to take a big step forward. Maybe. The yellow ribbon was sort of an even performance. I wanted to like her that day. I did like her that day. She didn't come with that fire that I expected I in the stretch, although Cambodia, a true horse for course, won it, came back to run second in the maybe with a 96 fire. I think there's some upside here. The mile and an eighth, I think she'll get it. I think she'll get it too. I think that's what, if you like her, I think that's what you like about You like the upside for her. The, the, she could take a step forward and maybe the paired up 90 suggests she's going to do it. I don't love either of her last years. I thought she ran fine. I didn't think she ran well enough to beat this field. Timeform US did not have Daring Duchess out there yeah. on the early lead, but you'd have to think that Rafael Hernandez has to be aggressive because all of her best races seemingly have come when she's on or very close to the pace. Those fractions last time out in the Flaming Page Stakes, she better win when she goes 54-119, <laughs> and she did do so. Yeah. But that's not the kind of race to rate her off of. I agree with that. Um, it does feel like her best game is going a little bit longer than this, and especially in races where she can make the pace. And it seems like she might have a pretty tough time cutting the pace in this race. That worries me about her. You know, she's held her own, I guess, in Greatest Stakes company, but it feels like she's probably a couple of real Greatest Stakes horses. I don't know, Dan. It's Mike Maker again. I don't put anything past him, but I don't really like this horse. We have identified three speeds, however, the one, the four, mm -hmm. and the six, and maybe that helps out the late runners. Horses like the two, Mythical Mission, who actually overcame a rather moderate pace at a mile and 70 yards last time out at Mountaineer Park to win, and she goes out for Graham Motion. A formulator fact, He's won a third of the time over the past five years with last out winners and graded stake turf routes off a very small layoff with a 373 ROI. This is a Samsung filly. I'm yeah. not worried about her ability to get the mile in an eighth. And if she gets the right setup, a little slow on paper, but if she gets the right setup, she's the kind of horse I'd fool around with in single race exotics. She's the kind of horse I'm definitely using at a price in this race. I don't know if she's good enough. Um, I guess we'll find out more about it, but I do think she'll get the mile in eight too. The race too bad. It seemed to be a clear case where she did get the mile and a quarter because she was still in contention in the stretch there. She just got really tired late and gave it up. I think this little bit shorter distance helps her. Um, if you start picking apart her races, it saved the race too bad where they went too far. She's not that far behind in flexibility the three times that they run against each other. She's almost on par with that horse. If she can improve just a little bit in this race, I think she can get a piece of it. I wanted to make a little bit of a case for Bletchley because she's going to be rallying off this solid pace. And her last race just was an excuse in and of itself yeah. because the ground at Saratoga was extremely soft. And coming into that race, she had paired up by her tops and maybe was heading the right way. But when you watch the dance smartly, didn't inflexibility do all the heavy lifting and still finish ahead of her? Yeah, I, I think she did. I I mean, I guess the thing with this dance mar that you could say is a mile and a quarter. Maybe that's not her thing. Fair. It's a little too Fair. far for her, but that race set up perfectly for her. And even though she got into a little bit of traffic in the stretch, she had the setup. She got clear. She didn't finish hard in that race. It bothered me about it. I'll give her the soft turf excuse last time, but she was bad in that race. I'm just not sure how good this horse is, Dan. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Canadian stakes. It's got to be Brown. I like Chad's inflexibility. You like Chad's new money, honey. I think we're both sitting in the second flight behind those aforementioned three speeds. Inflexibility has perhaps a home court advantage a little yeah. bit on the turf, and an Andy Byer I trust. Those last two figs faster than anything okay. else the rest of this field has run. I went 3-5-8-1, but you believe that new money, honey, again, if she runs her best race, simply the best horse. I mean, that's how I'm looking at it. I mean, it's, it is one of those races where I will say that you have two Chad Brown horses, both of them at short prices, and neither one of them has to win this race. Fair. I really wanted to look at, in a different direction, and I ultimately couldn't talk myself into Mythical Mission. I'm not sure if she's good enough, but she's the other horse for me. 5-3-2 for Mike. Again, 3-5-8-1 for me in the Grade 2 Canadian Stakes. Bet it with the DRF Bets account. Bet this card. It's a great one. 300% deposit match when you go to bets.drf.com and sign up for a DRF Bets account. Approximate post time for the Canadian, 527 Eastern. Good luck.